Welcome back to another video. In this video I'm going to code uh, the core functionality of our menu, our GUI menu for our units. So when I left click this, the icons in the menu, a ghost model appears of the unit itself so we know where it's going to be built in the scene. So the, the model follows my mouse exactly so I know where we're going to build it. It hovers above the terrain a little bit so we can see the whole model. I can right click to cancel the selection and also left click between buttons so I can switch between the, the graphics. So I call this the ghost graphics because they're essentially transparent versions of our models so we know where to build them. Okay so this is what we're doing in this video. Okay here I am in our project. The first thing we need to do is assign these ghost objects to our units. Okay so what can we use for the ghost, uh, the ghost objects? Well we can use what, whatever model you like but I thought it would be easier to use the same model as the unit itself. So a couple of videos ago I, I merged all these objects into one model for our solar farm. This was so we can just use this model and just simply replace the material from a solar farm map to my transparent material which is located here. So just a transparent specular shader. It's one of the default shaders in Unity and we've just lowered the, the uh, transparency, the alpha channel a bit. and um, we're going to use this in our script. So we just need to assign each unit a ghost model. I'll be doing this in my unit script. So within my unit script I can create a public game object. Let's say GUI ghost because essentially it is part of the GUI system. Okay, um, if we dive into our resources and our units I'm only going to do this for the solar farm in the wood post because these two units do not currently have any means to be created. If we dive down and look at our children, like the health bar, etc., we can. This is the graphic. This is the the model we use in the game. We can instantiate this graphic into a separate game object and simply replace the material. So that's what I'll be doing. So selecting the parent objects where it says GUI ghost, I'm going to drag the child one on top of this. So we have a way to refer to this object easily within our script. So doing the same to the wood post, dragging the the wood post. But there's one thing wrong here, there is no mesh renderer and there's no uh, material which means this isn't the model object itself. So diving into my hierarchy here, opening up wood post. So the wood post itself is the parent, p cube 1 seems to be the model itself. So this needs to be fixed if this functionality is going to work. So dragging this out breaking the prefab for now. So deleting the wood post empty game object. It must have been apparent in, in Maya when I was modeling this so keep an eye out for that. Wood post. Now we can reassign the prefab, updates all of our other units. And I might also call this graphic so keep things simple. Updating again. Cool so now we have these ghosts we can then refer to them in our script. So within our menu setup scripts, I'm going to create a few more public variables. Public game objects ghost. So even though each unit has a separate ghost model, only one is going to be active at, at any particular time because the user only uses one mouse to to control these. We're going to instantiate the unit's ghost and put it within put it in here the ghost game object. Let's assign a public material ghost material and also a public static boolean called ghost active. So we're going to track whether a ghost object is currently active in the scene and we can say false because when this first loads there will be no ghost object. Okay so before I forget let's attach the transparent material onto this script so ghost material transparent. Okay. So now within our GUI button we can then code um, how to instantiate this ghost object. Uh, we can say ghost equals instantiate. So we already have our units in our for loop here. We can say units get component unit script uh, ghost, GUI ghost, that's the one. We have the ghost. We can um, give it a position vector 3, 0 because at this time we don't know where our mouse point is. We'll deal with this in a minute. And uh, the last thing is the rotation. Let's just say quaternion identity for now. The default world rotation. 
So before I test this, we can just assign a few more properties to this. We can give it the material we defined. So ghost renderer material equals our ghost mat, ghost material. Uh, we can give this game object a name. So ghost name equals our unit names at this index. Okay, just getting the the name um, from the unit we're creating. And then we can say ghost active equals true. There is a ghost object in our scene now, making this true. So before I continue, let's just test and see if this works. So I'm going to click both of them, and the variable GUI ghost of the unit has not been assigned. I don't think I assigned. So I did not assign my GUI ghost because I think I overwrit the prefab. No worries. So again, it's the graphic, the actual model. Um, check the solar, the solar panel was fine. Um, let's try again. So instantiating both of them, hop over to the scene view. So here we go. The solar farm is here. And yep, so is this wooden post. So our ghost objects are created when we click the, the menu, but they need to follow our mouse as we're going through the terrain. But the good thing is we've already worked this out. We did it in our mouse script and we called it current mouse point. Um, so let's open the mouse script. So within my mouse script, um, this is where we track the current mouse point in the scene. So the current mouse point is just where the mouse lies on the terrain in 3D space. There's a raycast um, pointing from the mouse going into the, the scene in 3D space and where it hits the terrain, that is the point. So we actually work it out here, current mouse point. There's a raycast um, projecting out from the uh, the mouse. Screen point to ray. That's the method we used way back when we first started the series. So this is a private variable at the moment, current mouse point. We want to make this public so other scripts can access this. So to demonstrate this, I'm also going to change this to a, from a lowercase to an uppercase C. Replace all. And that's all we need to do with our mouse. So now other scripts can access this vital piece of information. OK, so I'm actually going to add a component to our ghost graphic to, to change its position in the game. OK, so scripts. I'm going to create a one called unit ghost. And we can add this to um, our ghost graphic using a very simple method called add component. We can do it here when we first instantiate it. We can just say ghost add component unit ghost. Boom, okay? Simple as that. So let's open this ghost script. So on this script, we want to update the ghost model position. So, simple enough, we can say transform position, new vector 3. So we can go to the mouse script now and get the current mouse point dot x. Then we can copy this and say the y and the z values. Just going to spend a couple of seconds changing these. OK. So now on every frame, this updates to where the mouse point is in the scene. That's great. But I want to do one more thing in this video. When I click the right mouse button, equals cancel ghost selection. So if input get mouse button up, index 1, which is the right mouse button, we can simply say destroy this game object. OK, so this is as complicated as I want to get this script in this video. So I'm going to test this out now. So clicking this, and the ghost object is following my mouse. That's good. I'm, go I'm going to right click to get rid of this. But a few things happen when we right click. The diamond is um, being instantiated. We don't want to do this. Um, and also, I want to replace the ghost objects when I click these icons, not, not to keep instantiating them. So we can fix these issues in this video. The other thing we should have done is say menu setup ghost active equals false because we've just got rid of the object. So firstly, if we go back to the mouse script, we can um, cancel all of this functionality if we want to after we've got the current mouse point. And to do this, we can just define a new region. I'm going to call it cancellations and region. 
because for now I don't want to dive into my mouse script and change things because I, I might want to use this for other projects as I mentioned earlier. So within a region we can then refer to other scripts and cancel out this functionality. So we can just say if menu setup if there's a ghost active simply return from the update method then none of this will be called. And the thing is we need this functionality to call the late updates to start with because if we're not dragging the late updates will not have any instructions and neither will the uh, on GUI. We need to be dragging for the on GUI to work. So we're just exiting here basically. That's the first thing. If we go to the menu setup, right when we want to create a new ghost object, we can say if again if the ghost if there's a ghost active, we can destroy it. So destroy ghost. Okay, and then a new ghost will be created. So fixes both of these issues. The other thing is that um the ghost objects are kind of of uh, low. I know my solar farm is intersecting with the terrain quite often. So the last thing I'd like to do in this video is bring it up a little bit. So within unit ghost I'm just going to put wire plus two. We're going to find a more sophisticated way of testing these in the next few videos but just for now we can make do the simple solution. So now the, the object is not really intersecting as much on the terrain. So that's good. Cool, so I think that's all I wanted to go through in this video. Clicking to cancel the objects. They're floating above the terrain following my mouse. Okay guys, so just to recap, we just simply copy the model of our units, which is a child object of the unit itself, and uh, instantiating this object and changing the material. So that's I think I'll leave it here for this video. Thanks for watching, hopefully I'll see you in the next one.